All right, so last video, and this is more or less, I wanted to make this video and point out, Al does these write-ups and he marks up the chart and there's confusion as to why he is marking some of the entries he's marking and people are questioning if those are really the best trades or I mean, they're just difficult. It's, it's, I don't see how, people are having trouble understanding how they could, how how he could enter there. You know, is he really taking all these? So I wanted to kind of go through today and just explain his thought process on why he would take those. So you have, let's just kind of go one by one and you could buy bar two. It's not unreasonable. And if you buy it, you can hold through it. And here's where the part gets tricky. It's the management of the trade that's most important. You could buy here, scale in, get out, break even. You could buy here, hold through the pullback, get out at your original entry, and then if this bar closed up here, you can buy again. You could scalp out during this bar, or you could stay long. You could buy the high of this bar. And if you did, there's a way not to lose money. Now again, this isn't like a guarantee. This is just a, it's a management approach. If you bought this close, you're disappointed by this bar. Well, guess what? This bar went up before it went down. If you're buying above a stop entry, you want a breakout. You want it to go up. So if you buy and there's hesitation, traders will get out. And the reason they'll get out is because they're comfortable with getting back in. One of the problems is when people start looking at all this, they have trouble understanding, you know, I can't, I don't want to get out of the trade because I'll have trouble getting back in the trade. And They've spent the past two hours trying to figure out a trade to get in. Well, the more you look at charts, the more you understand, well, gee, I could actually get out of any of these trades and there's a way to get back in. So it be kind of it all becomes kind of one move that people start taking in pieces. So Al could say that's a reasonable buy, disappointed, get out when this bar went back up at break even. You could sell below this bar. It went up and as it's turning down, you know, more bulls are gonna give up. They could sell here. This bar. It's a sell. Sure. This bar, you would have lost money if you held all the way to here, but traders aren't going to do that. They're going to sell. They're disappointed here. And some would might get out as this bar starts to turn up. They sold, disappointed. And during this bar, they would take profits. I made a video over today earlier. Watch that. I explained it more. Why didn't this trigger? Well, it didn't trigger, so there's no reason to get out of the bar. You could sell this low one. Maybe you you sold this close, scaled in, or you know it's not a stop entry, so you'd sell here. It's reasonable, close when it's low. Didn't close on its low, so you wait for a pullback. You could sell here, and as the market starts to turn up, you know again this bar lost money over here, but as this bar started to turn up here, you could get out for a small profit, or maybe break even. Bull bar, it's a reasonable buy, good follow through. Another bull bar, you can buy above it here. And these squares, the left is where the stop entry is. The, the left is where the stop entry is. Here's the stop entry. So this bar, find the square, look to the left, find the square, look to the left, this square, look to the left. It's this bar he's talking about. So you could buy here, buy here. And you know, he didn't buy, he didn't mark this one because it's a wedge, one, two, three, but you could buy it, use the right stop, and you'd have a chance to get out break even. If you didn't, you know, if you bought here and you maybe you get out, break even here, maybe you hold. If the bit risk is big, you buy above here, maybe you can put a stop here. You could buy here, and if you're disappointed, maybe you get out around your entry or you hold. Some traders, they they think there's gonna be a pullback rather than buying above this bar, they wait for the second entry here. Others, maybe they want the big bull bar, they want a breakout of this flag and they buy here. Others buy here and even if they did, they don't panic by this bar because they know it's going to get retested. So worst case, they avoid a loss, get out, break even. Some will scale in lower. Bulls buy here and they see these couple bars sideways, they get out quickly, maybe break even, maybe they get out here. Consecutive wedges, one, two, three, complex, one, two, three. Bears can sell below this bar right here, betting on a couple legs down. Traders will sell here. So if they sold and they saw this bar, 
They might be disappointed betting on a retest. It's a micro channel, so probably sellers above didn't trigger. Maybe they hold again. So traders may sell here, but this isn't strong enough to reverse it. And even if, even if, when the market went straight down, as the market starts to turn up, traders take profits. Traders buy here. They can use the wide stop. They might get out below this bar, but if they did, they'd buy again here. Traders could buy here. And every one of these is a stop entry that closed on its high. And they could hold for the swing, or they could get out on the dojis confident that they could buy again here or here, or wait and buy here, or buy here. So the point is, it's not so much most people, especially including Al, is not going to buy above this bar and put a stop down here and sit on his hands as this bar starts to turn down. He's buying, bad follow through, he's going to get out break even. He sells here, and I'm, I don't know if he actually sold here, I'm just, I'm, it's, I'm using Al as an example. He might sell here, disappointed, guess what he's going to do? He's going to scalp out of the trade. Disappointment means scalp. If you knew the market was, if you knew at this bar the market was going to go to 4,000 and all you had to do was wait till the end of the day, you would buy a full size position and set a target up here and do whatever you want. But you don't know that, so traders will scalp out expecting disappointment. So the fascinating thing about today is every one of these entries you could have avoided a loss. And you have to think through that. And also, buying here and holding even through this deep pullback all the way to here is the same thing as buying in part. So buying here, you know, scaling in, getting out, buying again, scalping out, buying a pullback, scalping out. It's the same trade. So think through that. I hope this helps. And that's a really challenging, it takes a long time to really think about that and really understand that most, most of the time you can avoid a loss. The market's in 40, 60. That's a very challenging thing to think through, and the more you think about it, the easier it gets. So I get it, but I just wanted to provide that. You know, traders, when you're tracking a stop entry, you're betting on a breakout. You're betting on a breakout of the bar you bought or sold below. Hence, a stop. And you want the market to go your way quickly. You know, you don't buy a breakout in the hopes of getting a 50% pullback. You buy a breakout in the hopes that the market's going to go higher really fast. You know, you buy this bar because you're hoping the next bar looks like this. You're not buying this bar hoping that you get this bar. You know, case in point. You don't buy this bar hoping for a bear bar. You buy it hoping for a strong move up. And you buy it because you're confident that the first reversal down will fail and you'll probably get a second leg. Well, we went down, so the first reversal here, it failed as the market went up and traders got to get out. So hope this helps.